Hello YouTubers, um, thanks for tuning in. Um, this is a little kind of uh, demo of the Control 4 Composer software. Um, we're just going to set up a room and a couple of devices and connect some bindings. Um, thanks for uh, tuning in, as I said before. Um, I'm not feeling too well at the moment. I've got a bit of a cold, so I'm kind of sat here. I'm not going into work today. And I thought I'd just record a video. So um, let's see how it goes. So we've got a composer um, loaded up here. You can see it on the screen. Um, it's this version 2.10.1, which is the latest version of composer, um, which includes the uh, new equipment, this CA1. Um, controller that Control 4 have just released, which is predominantly, it's really just a Zigbee extender, um, or I guess it's a basic controller for non AV related tasks. Um, what we're going to do is we're just going to connect up a virtual system here because I've not actually got a system, any hardware, um, where I'm based at the moment here. So um, let's click on virtual <clears throat> and you will see Composer is. Oh, Let's just do this. I've literally just installed this, so let's get on. This is a nice new computer that I've bought to speed up things, um, although it's taken a bit of time here. Allow access, come on. Fine, right. So here we go. So this is the main screen of Composer. Um, in this box here, this is our system design. So um, this is basically, you, you work out, you end up with a tree. Of components and rooms and various things in there. And let's start putting in some information. We're just going to call this um, Smart Tech. Uh, smart Tech GG. Just going to call it Smart Tech GG. There we go. Um, so you can see it change at the top there. Um, you can put your location in, longitude, latitude, and various things in here. Um, we're not going to do that for this uh, pro for this little demo sample of the software. Um, Fahrenheit and Celsius. If you're in the UK, obviously it's Celsius. Um, Fahrenheit for other countries. Um, <clears throat> 24 hour clock. Pretty all pretty basic things here. Um, just looking at the overview here. On the right hand side, you've got a list of or box a section called items. That contains locations, um, any devices that are on your network that can be discovered. Um, there's nothing that's coming up here in this uh, connection that I'm on at the moment. Um, drivers, and you can search for new drivers. Um, let's just move this across here a bit. There we go. Okay, so let's start making our project. So we're going to start with the home. And we're going to, this is going to be on the main floor. Uh, we're going to have a living room. There we go. And uh, I mean, this is this is just a very basic overview, really, of, of building up a, a system. Um, there's lots of other things to consider. Um, obviously, with this, with Control 4, um, you have to um, have a license to use Control 4. You need to be trained. Um, the only way you can get a license is by training. It's quite strict the way it's uh, controlled, but it's a, it's good because it keeps it locked down. Basically, only people who know what they're doing can tamper with it because you need to go through the training process, which is really good. Okay, so um, let's have a quick look what we're going to add here. If we go to our um, drivers, we're going to add a controller. So I think I've not actually used a CA1 yet, so I think we're going to add a CA1. There we go, that's what that looks like. And we're going to also add an EA1 because we've got a, um, we want to connect some video to our display so we can see our nice control for um, control screen. Um, also, what else shall we add? An SR260 remote control. <clears throat> this is just going to be a simple room, I think, you know, with a uh, TV and a and an amp, basically, and a uh, receiver. 
So if we add a receiver, let's just go for, oh no, these are really old. Um, let's close out of that, go to search. So basically we were adding these devices to this room, as you can see. So in the living room we've got a CA1 and an EA1. We probably wouldn't have that to be honest, you'd probably have actually another room, so maybe in the um, in the laundry room or something you'd have this CA1. Uh, there we go, so that's that's in there, so that's almost like I'm using that as a Zigbee booster in this situation, in this um, imaginary situation. Um, back to the living room, search for my drummer, so we'll put a, a Denon an AVRX Denon AVRX, what have we got here? Um, there's lots of let's, let's look uh, type here we go, so we want to go for a receiver sorry I'm a bit slow today I'm just kind of feeling the pain of this man flu that I'm suffering at the moment it's not good um, so we'll put an AVRX 4100 into there there we go, so you'll see that load up and it will pop up down here so that's our receiver and um, we need a TV don't we, so let's choose a TV uh, a television, there we go and for this we will use a Sony we use let's do most recent new mm. do those look new I guess they are um, what have we got here I just wanted to choose something simple something that's IP controlled so you get a great list of um, you know drivers and things um, as you can see here so I'm going to use a 49x850B, one of those. <clears throat> As you can see, a comprehensive list. Um, if I was to click to certified drivers only, um, I'm going to take these. No results, see. So obviously these drivers have not been certified by Control 4. But um, there are lots of certified uh, Control 4 drivers. Um, Incidentally, the Sony's um, do operate um, using the SDDP protocol, so they're, they, they're discovered. So if you had a TV here, um, in fact, if I turn my TV on quickly, I'll just do that. You might see my TV pop up and be discovered, I don't know. Yeah, there we go. So I've just turned my TV on. I've got a KD49X8088. So what we'll do is we'll delete this one. Okay, delete. And we'll add my TV. If you just double click on it. And it adds it all in there. So now there's no real setting up to do as such on this TV. No um, IP addresses or anything to put in. Because if we go to connections down here and then to network you'll see the Sony TV and it's already got its IP address and uh, as you can see there SDDP Sony TV so that's great so any SDDP equipment um, if you can use that with control 4 it does save not a lot of messing around but it just makes things easier and it, and it works it's very reliable this form of control um, back to system design so there we go I think we've got um, some basic components here um, should we just add a DVD player maybe <clears throat> um, let's go to DVD one of those we'll get one of those Sony UBX that's a 4k blu-ray player um, and that's it okay so that's our basic project um, the next thing to do is 
it's kind of built um, specifically this way. So we start with system design, then connections, and if you have any media or anything, you can load up media. Um, you add agents for various um, things. So if I click on add agents here, you've got other advanced kind of control options and things, which we're not going to delve into now. And last but not least is programming. Um, where we can set, just get what's open, you can, you can make other settings, so, um, yeah, so on the system remote control you can have, I don't know, various, very complex things you can do in programming anyway, um, to make basically anything happen. So, um, if we go back to connections, so, let's open up our tree again here. So the, f the main device really in this setup is obviously the EA1 um, because this is going to be the main controller for, the, for this room. Um, if you have an EA1 and a CA1 in a project, um, the EA1 has to be the main controller and the CA1 can't be the main controller. Um, if you just had one CA1, then that could be the main controller, if you know what I mean. Um, that's the way it works. Um, if we go back to system design, actually, in EA1, um, yeah, that's, a, that's all fine. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so uh, the, the, yeah, the main, so the main component, really, the controller, is the EA1. Um, however, everything is connected to the um, AV receiver. So, if we click on the AV receiver, you get a list of all the inputs, as you can see here. So. Obviously, if I click on an output, so the uh, output of the receiver, um, audio video output, so the uh, this is the main output here. If I click on that, then it gives you a list of inputs on your Sony TV. So we're going to connect that to, so the TV to the amplifier by dragging across like this. And there you go. So you can see the AVRX output is connected to HDMI 1 of the Sony TV. And likewise, we have a Blu-ray player. So we will click on the input for the Blu-ray. And you can see here, the Blu-ray player is listed as devices. Drag that across. There we go. So the AVRX has Sony Blu-ray as an input on Blu-ray. The EA1. And basically to get some screen feedback um, so you can use your display to control the rooms um, and, and options um, so, uh, you need to connect this to an input as well so we're just gonna for this example here connect that to input orgs one there we go so that is basically it um, that's all our connections done so it's literally like um, physically wiring the cable so you're selecting an input or an output and then dragging it across into various areas um, and that's as simple as it is really um, connection wise um, <clears throat> in network you will see um, where we've got our EA1 so you need to put the IP address in for the A1 the CA1 IP address in for that the AVRX, actually the Denons are SDDP as well, I believe. So those will work as per the Sony TV where you can go to Discovered and it will pop up if you've got a Denon AVR in your system. Um, Zigbee network, um, this system remote control that we've got here works on Zigbee. So you will go through a process, uh, if I click Identify, Oh, it's saying I'm not allowed to run that because I'm on virtual, but yeah, so you'd right mouse click and then identify the controller so it knows which controller is controlling that room, basically. <clears throat> and that is it, really. That is a basic control for system. Um, the system. Another thing you do is refresh navigators before doing any um, anything else after you've done some programming. Um, <clears throat> in tools menu, actually, we've got... Uh, I think it's network tools, yeah. So you need to actually fire up your Zigbee as well. 
um, before um, you can connect your um, SR260 to the system. Um, and that is basically a very simple system there. Um, I mean, obviously, I've not um, I've not uh, commissioned the EA1. I've not set that up. Um, the only other thing, actually, thinking about it here, I've just spotted this. I mean, we've used IP devices everywhere, but if you click on the EA1, you can see you can see up here where we've connected the EA1 to the auxiliary, the the audio output of the EA1 to the auxiliary here. And you have control outputs from this controller as well. So you have IR outputs. So if in any case the Blu-ray or the TV was IR, you could, <coughs> I mean the TV, see it's popped up here at the bottom because the TV's got IR control or IP control. So you could drag that across there, um, use a, uh, connect a little IR bud from the EA1 IR out one port to the TV IR and then that will control the TV happily IR um, yeah so that, that that's basically a bit of a I'm gonna disconnect that if you can do IP control it's always better to be fair it's a bit more um, robust than the good old IR control but um, so there we go that's a basic really really basic setup we'll do more of this um, I just thought I'm sitting around feeling a bit ill at home so I just record this video. Um, if you like the videos that I'm putting up, um, um, please subscribe um, or hit the bell. And then uh, when I release new videos, at least you'll be alerted because um, I'm not very frequent, unfortunately, with uploading videos. Um, but check out my other videos on Lutron and Reiko lighting control systems. Um, and I'll uh, I'll see if I can post another video up um, soon. So. Thank you and bye for now.